Welcome to this first video in my Notion series. If you're new here, my name is Abian. I'm a medical student studying in London. This video will be a general overview about what Notion is and what you can do with it. I'll be covering how you can download Notion, giving you a tour of its main features, how to create a dashboard, and I'll be showing you a few of the things that you can use Notion for. So let's get straight into it. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually go ahead into the Notion website and download it. Now it's completely free and you can download it on your Mac, on your laptop, Windows, and also on your devices, on your phone and your iPad. So you're just gonna to wanna to click sign up, create an account, and it will prompt you to obviously sign up. I've already signed up and downloaded. Once you've downloaded, this is kind of the screen you'll see. So this is a page in Notion. Essentially, you start off with a blank canvas. It doesn't have to be blank, you can start off with templates, but let me just start empty and I'll show you what we can do. So there are four main important areas that you need to be aware of. Workspaces, blocks, pages, and other, other media that you can attach. Essentially your workspace, you can find it on here, and in the sidebar you'll see all of your pages within your workspace. You can simply create a new page by clicking on new page here, and that'll bring you to that template that we just saw before. So now the first thing you notice is it automatically created an icon for me. I can change the icon to something else and it will let me do that. Actually, let's choose a drug icon. What's it called? Medication. There we go. Pill. It's called a pill. Let's choose a pill icon and let's call it medical school portal. Now if you stick around, I'll be showing you my actual dashboard that I use. But just to show you how to use and how to set it up, I'll be going through step by step with you. So you pick an emoji, you create a title, and you'll be presented with a blinking cursor. And you can see it says type dash for commands. Basically, this here is one block. And there are different types of things that a block can do. So I can add just plain text, I can add a page, I can add to-do lists, I can add headings and so on. So before I add any blocks, I'll show you that you can also add a cover image. So if you just go ahead there and click add a cover, you'll see you automatically created a cover image for me. I can change it and use a free image from Unsplash, or I can just pick one of these. So for example, let's just pick one of these, and there you go, that added a cover photo to my page. You can create a block called a callout, and you can also change the emoji here. So you might want to write yourself a cheesy little motivational quote, just so that every time you see this page, it reminds you to actually study. So you snooze, you lose, go get it. Or something, I don't know, I'm just making this up. And then the first thing I want to do is create a heading block. I like to use heading three because I think heading one and two are quite, quite big. And create a list of the main important modules. I like to actually do it by year. So I'm in year five right now. But if I wanted to have all my notes in one place, I could do one for year, year four. And if I wanted to have even my previous notes, I could do one for year three. So these are headings. Under the headings, I can add blocks and add more blocks later on. But I just want to show you one thing, which is table of contents. So if you type slash TOC and click enter, it will create kind of like this Wikipedia style hyperlinks that if you click, it will take you to that particular section. So right now it's not gonna be very useful, but if this page was very long and I had to scroll through, I could easily click on year five and it would take me straight down to that area. Okay, so once you've created all your headings, you can just start typing your module names. And you notice that at the moment these are just text, but I'll show you a quick little shortcut of how you can turn these into pages. So there we go, I've got three years each with three modules. If I now select the modules, I can click Alt, Command and Nine and you'll see that will turn them into pages with these little icons. So what I can do is I can go into that and now this is my module A page and I can just go back by clicking back here. I'm gonna do that for all three. Okay, so this is our basic portal created, our home page, if you will. You can also reorganize different blocks. So for example, if I wanted to create three columns here, I could add my year three, year four, and year five, drag it like this, and then I'll be able to drag these blocks under it as well. That way I can have everything just in one line like this. Now if I make this slightly bigger, I'll just expand this so you can see. What you can do is go ahead and click full width. That will just space everything out and make everything full width. So we've got a bit more breathing room here. One thing you can also do is type the dash three times and that will create a divider. You can see this faint little grey line. That can be used to divide sections. It doesn't really do anything, but it's useful if you want to organize stuff. 
For example, I can create a divider here and maybe I can add an image. I'm just going to choose a random image from Unsplash. Let's type, I don't know, doctor. And there we go, this is a decent one. I can resize it. And as you can see, that would just resize it. Let's add a few more blocks. Okay, and then, so I've just created a couple of to do's here and with this, you can just click and it'll complete. Now you can also add template buttons. So if you type slash and start typing template, you can add blocks inside of this template area so that every time you click it, it will add a new to do. Now I can change this, meaning that I don't have to just make it so that I can add to do. I can add whatever block inside this and every time I click the button, it will duplicate those blocks for me. So if there's a particular task that I do often, then I can create templates. So now that you've created your dashboard, let me show you some things that you can use Notion for. So the first thing you can use it for is as a planner. So I'm going to make this page full width again and I'm going to type slash table and you'll see table in line pop up. I'm going to click on that and call this my study schedule. And I'm going to add a view and you'll see this timeline This is actually a new feature. Click on it and click create. And let's just say I had several chapters and I want to plan out when to study each chapter. So just as an example, I've created a couple of um, example chapters that I have in this module. So I'll show you a quick little keyboard shortcut as well. If you select blocks and click command slash, that'll bring up this menu. That'll basically give you different options what you can do with that block. If I type T, then automatically turn into will get highlighted. So if I type T space and then bullet, there we go. I can turn this into a bulleted list just by typing T space and then bulleted list. Similarly, if I wanted to turn this into to do, I can just do command slash T space to do and there we go. So always make sure you utilize keyboard shortcuts because it can make your workflow a lot faster. Anyway, I'll change this back to bullet because what I was going to show you originally is this timetable view, which is very handy. So say for example, my module lasts the entirety of January and I want to plan my revision accordingly. So what I can do is firstly, I can drag these into the table. And as you can see, it created a new page for each chapter for me. And when I hover over to this table here, I can select the time that I want to schedule to revise for that particular chapter. So if I hover over here and click, it will automatically populate five days in my schedule for me. I can extend that or decrease the time by just dragging these sliders here. So let's say if I wanted to study cardiology by Sunday, and you'll see that the weekend also goes slightly gray so you can easily tell what day is which. And then after I study cardiology, I can start my rest till next week, okay? And let's say after that I wanna do renal, but renal only is only gonna take me four days, let's say. I'm just making this up just to show you that you can change the timings. And then finally, I'm gonna do hematology. So now I've got my study plan set up, from, you know, tomorrow, cardiology, well, today, up to the 26th of January, up to my hematology, and I've planned out when I'm going to study each chapter. But that's not enough. We can actually go into each particular chapter and click open here, and it will open that as its own separate page. And within that page, I can maybe add to-dos, and I might say be six pages or also have a look. Make. Thank you. Cards for me. Okay, so I've created my to do's, and I might actually want to say, okay, so every study session, do this. And you see it's gone bold in italics, that's because I just used keyboard shortcuts Command B and Command I to make it bold in italic. One thing I haven't showed you is that you can also add attachments. You can drag them directly on or you can actually click um, command and type file and you can upload your file. Now let's say for example, if there was a lecture that I needed to catch up on, I could attach that lecture right here. So I'm just gonna attach a random uh, PDF just to show you how this feature works. You can also embed attachments directly into the view itself, but I really tend to do that because it just takes a long time to load. But I'm going to cancel this because it's taking a long time to upload but it just shows you that you can add files if you want. 
So I will leave a link to this template that I just created for you. You can go ahead and copy it for your own use. This is not actually the one I use. As I said, I'll show you the one I use, which is just right here. As you can see, mine it actually has two little plugins, which shows me how many days I have until my exam. Now this I'll be covering in an upcoming video, so if you're interested in learning how to do that, then make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when that video pops up. And as you can see, I organize it in a similar way to how I showed. So these are my year four notes, these are my year five notes. If I go over into my notes, you'll see that I have different folders. I've got diagrams, clinical skills, and year four. These are the actual notes here. If I go in here, it's a bit of a mess because I didn't really tidy this up, but you'll see I've got a couple of attachments, I've got a couple of toggles. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to show you. If you press the greater than symbol, and press space, it'll create a toggle for you. Essentially what it is, is you can expand it and you can add more blocks inside that toggle. This block can just be text, you can drag other stuff into it, or you can just create one of the available blocks here and that will all get stored into that toggle. So when I collapse this, everything went inside that toggle and now is hidden in there. If I want to expand it again, I can expand it just by clicking it. This is quite useful if you create questions for yourself and you can hide the answer inside the toggle so that when you're revising it doesn't reveal the answer straight away. I also use it as an active recall but I'll be going through that method in another video. So as you can see I've got my table of contents with my different chapters and within each chapter I've got toggles of my notes. So for example let's just say headaches, I've got different causes of headaches, I've got different cluster headaches and so on and so forth and I've got these as toggles so that before I click to reveal the answer, I can have a think about, you know, what are the different causes of headache and try and actively recall things like tension headaches, migraines, stuff like that. Yep, tension headache, migrate, subarachnoid hemorrhage, yep, yep. I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but basically the advantage of toggles is that it allows you to jog your memory before you click to reveal the answer. That way your revision is a lot more active. So I've just touched the surface here on what a notion can actually do. You can also make Cornell style notes and there's also a different method that I use to make notes from lectures as well. So all of this information and how I actually make the notes, the whole process behind it, I'll be covering in my next video or in the, an upcoming video in this notion series. So if you're interested in that, then make sure you subscribe. I will be linking the template that I just created on live there. I'll be linking it so you can duplicate that if you're interested in using it. Another thing I want to mention is I've recently started my own newsletter. Now, I know you don't have much time, so I'm keeping it very simple. I'm going to have one paragraph of a very useful idea that I came across uh, the week. So for example, my first one was about acrasia, which is when you know you should do something but you can't muster the willpower to actually do it. And I've just noticed a typo. Oh, we'll pretend you didn't see that. And I'll have one quote and I'll have my latest video so you don't miss it. So if you're interested, then make sure you sign up. I'll put the link down below in the description as well. With that being said, if you have not checked out my Anki video, then feel free to check it out if you're interested. I'll put some cards if that works up there so you can click it and watch. With that being said, thank you very much for watching this video. Comment down below how you use Notion and if you're excited for the next video. With that being said, I'll see you in my next video.